In my opinion, it would be impossible to present a complete analysis of Kimi no no Wa without mentioning Makoto Shinkai's arguably most famous film before it, 5 centimeters per second. 5 centimeters per second is a marvelous, flawed, yet also beautifully drawn film whose themes and earnest pains can still be felt in Kimi no no Wa. The two films complement each other in terms of shared trauma and sentimentalities, and an emerging essence of Kimi no no Wa can be seen in several key scenes of 5 centimeters per second. My favorite sequence of 5 centimeters per second occurs during the first act of the film, when the young male protagonist, Takaki, boards a train on a cold winter night in hopes of later meeting his friend, Akari. Makoto Shinkai illustrates this opening scene beautifully, making heavy use of flecks of snow and flickering lights, and then populating this atmosphere with detailed reproductions of Tokyo transit procedures and closely observed glistening metallic surfaces. Makoto Shinkai manages to make an ordinary train ride memorable with his photorealistic imagery. I believe that Makoto Shinkai holds a special regard for even mundane things like public infrastructure, and he uses close-up shots of metal rail bars and overhead light fixtures or the rattling of the iron footboards connecting train cars because it almost feels like we are viewing the memory of an actual real-life commute Makoto Shinkai himself once took on a train, which he then replicated for this movie. And this results in a more personal and thus more meaningful viewing experience for the audience, feeling almost nostalgic, even if we might never have ridden a train in Japan before. Makoto Shinkai's attentive and keen eye towards infrastructure extends to his other movies, including Kimi no Nawa, witnessed in how faithfully he reconstructs Tokyo in his movies. When Mitsuha steps into Tokyo for the first time, the awe she feels mirrors what we might also feel as the audience, as we alongside Mitsuha become immersed into the city, a city which Makoto Shinkai has clearly walked through many times himself before. The depiction of real-life Tokyo landmarks gives a sense of familiarity, but the glow of morning light and the spotless sheens of glass windows and metallic surfaces creates a cleaner, brighter rendition of Tokyo that an enthusiastic young countryside girl like Mitsuho would envision, or that an audience member who has never been to Tokyo might envision. The meticulous detail in Makoto Shinkai's drawings helps preserve a snapshot of the reality he once lived in, but the choices in his art direction do more than just preserve that reality, they help transform the artist's memory into something far more beautiful than what reality could ever hope to be. Going back to the opening train scene of 5 centimeters per second, I mainly believe this scene is pertinent to Kimi no Nawa due to how deftly it introduces Makoto Shinkai's contemplations on the dimensions, taking things that can exist on a grander cosmic scale but instead fostering them in the more intimate setting of a boy riding on a train to see a girl. First, there is the established goal of Takaki wanting to see Akari, from whom he has been separated by both distance and time, since Takaki has not seen Akari for over a year ever since she moved from Tokyo to the Tochigi prefecture. And this Takaki boarding a train to see Akari is attempting to close both these measures of distance and time. Trains are repeatedly used as metaphors in Makoto Shinkai's films, as purveyors of distance over time, and also as points of intersecting arrivals and departures. And in this opening scene of 5 centimeters per second, the train alone controls the dimensions held over Takaki. It is the lone arbiter that determines whether Takaki may achieve his goal, controlling both his place in the universe in relation to his goal and the amount of time it will take to reach that goal. Because of this, the train can be seen as the sole representation of a greater system that confines not only Takaki, but many other characters in Makoto Shinkai's films. And the effects of the confines of the system, of the universe, are demonstrated in the profound helplessness Takaki feels during his journey. The narration takes note to mention that this is the first time Takaki has ever gone to Shinjuku Station or ridden these trains by himself, 
inviting the audience to remind ourselves what it was once like to be an adolescent. Pretty much all of Makoto Shinkai's movies involve youths or adolescents, and maybe it's because they're the most profitable target audience, or maybe it's because Makoto Shinkai can be criticized as having views on romantic relationships that might have never progressed beyond those of an overly idealistic teenager. But I do think Makoto Shinkai chooses to write stories about young people because experiences like a first Tokyo train ride, sitting in the passenger cars, and the anticipation of meeting a girl you like, these all become more sensory and vividly rich when told from the perspective of our youth. And so, adolescence is a period of time when beauty is much more acutely affecting, we, we become much more sensitive to it, and it is more impressionable due to its novelty, but also more disarming due to its unfamiliarity. Takaki cares deeply for Akari, and he doesn't want to lose Akari, but during his train ride he becomes occupied with a recollection of regret, a phone call when he was unable to help Akari during a moment of distress. He felt there was nothing he could do due to their separation. Takaki feels frustrated at this separation, which represented a factor of his situation over which he had no control. And fear is a primal response to lack of control. Humans have a natural tendency to gravitate towards familiar environments as a means of self-preservation. We want to be able to easily predict and rationalize our general situations because only then can we feel assured in autonomy over ourselves and the things we cherish. But the hard reality of life, and perhaps the thesis of 5 centimeters per second as a film, is that it is impossible for any one person to fully control the overall system, and distance and time represent parameters of this overarching system that are beyond our control. And just as little control as we have over the distance separating even the furthest galaxies, we must also accept the fact that we have no control on the inevitable distance between hearts. We can't control how another person feels and how this distance grows with time. Makoto Shinkai makes numerous references to time during Takaki's train ride. The continual intercom messages keep announcing further delays of time, and the repeated close-up shots of Takaki's watch signify the increasing passage of time. And the intent of these references is to emphasize the relentless, unwavering control time has over Takaki's goal. Takaki is restricted from meeting Akari due to distance in time, and so Takaki sitting alone on the train, fully at its mercy, is almost representative of how humanity as a whole is often adrift, prone to the whims of the universe. And the many shots of birds in 5 centimeters per second represent a sort of blissful desire to somehow be free of this overwhelming burden. Because this precarious existential dread weighs threateningly over Takaki throughout his journey, dissuading his confidence and instilling his worst anxieties. And these emotions begin to swell and overflow in the first act of 5 centimeters per second when the wheels of the train suddenly stutter to a shuddering, shivering halt in the wintry night. The iron squeals a whisper into the billows of an endlessly barren snowfield. It is at this point of perfect, frozen silence, when distance and time have both come to a complete standstill, that Takaki breaks and gives into despair, begging for Akari to go home and not wait for him any longer. Takaki voicing his frustrations with the dimensions, bemoaning the agonizingly slow crawl of time and the unbearable distance he must endure to meet Akari, is him criticizing the very paradigm of the universe and the control it exerts over not just him, but also the characters of Kimi no Nawa in every Makoto Shinkai movie as well. And Takaki submitting to his worst fear, to the realization that the separation between him and Akari might never be closed, is him admitting defeat to this universe. And then there is that beautiful moment when Takaki, who had given up hope and felt utterly defeated by distance and time, arrives at the train station late at night and sees Akari still waiting for him there. Despite all his worries, despite the delays, despite the dimensions of all the universe seemingly working against him, Akari is still there, and then, standing beneath a bare cherry blossom tree, Takaki thinks to himself that, despite all the measures of distance and time looming over them, 
all his fears melted away by the relief of her soft lips against his. A single kiss, a single utterance of I love you can shatter our paradigm of the entire universe. We suddenly feel like we can break free of the measures that constrain us and soar high above the dimensions, almost like a time flyer. In ways, it is an answer to 5 centimeters per second in many of Makoto Shinkai's previous films, just as much as it is an answer to existing mythical legends on BD mentioned in this essay. I spent several pages of my essay detailing the gradual buildup and release of emotions in the opening act of 5 centimeters per second, but the most obvious connection between 5 centimeters per second and Kimi no Nawa lies in their endings. The opening act of 5 centimeters per second is a heartwarming window into a winter's first love, while the final act is a melancholy melody of springtime pain. And the ending of Kimi no Nawa appears to be a direct callback to this ending given the similar camera shots and emotions expressed. 5 centimeters and Kimi no Nawa are similar in that for the entirety of both movies, the audience is meant to root for the reunification of the main characters. In Kimi no Nawa, Taki and Mitsuha both have their own individual compelling stories, but the two actually rarely meet at all during the runtime of Kimi no Nawa. Taki and Mitsuha meet only three different times throughout the movie, and one is just a flashback. From the opening scene, the primary dramatic tension draws from the audience yearning for both Taki and Mitsuha to meet, and for both to actually recognize each other when they meet. Which is why the moment they finally meet during the brief window of twilight atop the Itamori crater is perhaps the most beautiful scene in the movie. It is a catharsis of the audience's expectations, and it is intimate, romantic, and tenuous in how short it lasts. And so the remainder of Kimi no Nawa is waiting, hoping for Taki and Mitsuha to somehow reunite again. They met in twilight, and then they lost their memories of each other in the dreamlike fog that followed. In the opening and closing monologues of Kimi no Nawa see both characters rummaging their souls in the aftermath of their loss, hoping to find the something or someone who can make them whole once more. And this is where the parallel with 5 centimeters per second comes in. The first act of 5 centimeters introduces us to the endearing young romance between Takaki and Akari, and for the rest of the movie, the audience wishes to see a heartfelt reunion between the two. And at the very end of both 5 centimeters per second and Kimi no Nawa, the characters do finally meet each other, and both of these fateful encounters occur on bright springtime mornings in the city of Tokyo as cherry blossoms flutter in the breeze. Quite a while ago in this essay, I asked, why does Kimi no Nawa deviate from the course of his predecessors when it allows for Taki to not only bring Mitsuha back to life, but for them to also reunite happily at the end? And when I said I would answer this question in the context of an analysis of one more Makoto Shikai film, which was 5 centimeters per second. And I will finally more directly answer that question now. At the ending of both films, Taki and Takaki marry each other in that they are both listless, jobless, somewhat disillusioned male adults wandering through life in Tokyo. And at the center of both their struggles is a quiet suffering from loss. 5 centimeters per second is a bittersweet film about accepting loss and moving on from a relationship where love has faded. Throughout the movie, Takaki holds on to a dream of still being together with Akari, and given how anime tropes usually go, the audience might be led to expect this dream to be fulfilled. But a consistent theming I noticed in Makoto Shinkai's films is that, while Shinkai honors beauty in many of his films, he does not wish to embellish this beauty beyond the reason of lived experience. It would be irresponsible to disservice the audience in such a way. A common criticism I've seen of Makoto Shinkai is that the perspective of his films are often too narrow. But what I see is a director trying to write stories that are a reflection of his own reality, imperfect as it may be. And in 5 centimeters per second, I believe that Makoto Shinkai wants to tell his own personal truth that maybe he experienced in his own love life. An observation of an imminent mortality inherent to even the most blossoming of beauties. Basically, I just want to say that Makoto Shinkai makes sad movies. Like the tales of Orpheus and Eurydice and Izanagi and Izanami before it. 
5 centimeters per second emulates a tragedy told in legend since time immemorial. Love is ephemeral, fleeting, and mortal, and to pretend otherwise would only be a futile, sorrowful endeavor. Orpheus and Izanagi were unable to revive their lost loved ones, just as Takaki irrevocably lost his. So, what about Kimi no no wa then? Why is Kimi no no wa different? In a way, one can argue that Kimi no no wa is actually no different from these previous tales, because Taki and Mitsuwa share no memory of each other. When they meet each other at the end of the film, it is no different from meeting any other stranger. The mortality of Taki and Mitsuwa's previous relationship is still intact, and any future correspondence between the two is now with a separate new entity. If you think about it, the probability of meeting a specific stranger from the millions of Japanese citizens inhabiting Tokyo is so small that this encounter was never meant to be realistic. Instead, Taki and Mitsuo meeting a second time can be interpreted as a metaphor for finding a new, different love after a previous love was lost. And in this sense, the message of 5 centimeters per second is upheld as Taki and Mitsuwa are no longer clinging to this vague, indescribable loss in their hearts and are instead ready to start anew with this other person they just met. But Taki and Mitsuha are still each other. Taki is still Taki and Mitsuha is still Mitsuha, regardless of memories lost. What about all that talk I gave about the persistence of identity in the universe? So there is an intention in keeping Mitsuha alive and allowing for her and Taki to reunite. But why? Well, it's happier. <laughs> <laughs>